Hello and welcome to The Big Picture here on RCTV. Big Picture is a show where we talk about sports and we talk about big picture stuff in sports, not focusing on this game or that game, but really looking at the general what's going on in sports and what's happened in Boston sports. Right. My name is Kevin Vent. I am your host of The Big Picture, and this is my guest tonight, the intimidable Nick Face. How are you tonight, Nick? I am uh, just terrific. Kevin. Just How terrific. Are you? We are going to be doing part two of a two part series on yeah. the Boston sports top fives. In our previous episode, we looked at the uh, top five Boston Red Sox of all time and the top five Boston Bruins of all time and had mm -hmm. some invigorating discussion there. And this time around, we are going to talk about the top five Boston Celtics yes. of all time. And I continue to point out as we talk about this, it's kind of a challenging topic to do. It's kind of difficult. The Celtics have a long history of dominance. They're one of the best and most storied NBA franchises that's been around since you said 1946. 1946, In yeah. one of our, in our last show. And it is just incredible to look at how much talent we've really had over the years. Yeah, they've won 17 world championships in those yep. sport in the, since 1946. And when you consider that they didn't win their first until like 1951, yeah. you know, from 1951 to the present, 17 world championships, and they've yeah. been in three or four other times, you know. They have. And uh, they just really have been a dominant team. There was a period of time, yep. you know, from the late 80s, really early 90s, through the uh, mid 90s, I and would now. say, <laughs> where they weren't particularly yeah, good, yeah. and in the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, they have been a contender pretty much all the time. They have been. You know, and realistically, they were a contender from the early 1950s right up through the mid 70s. Yes. You know, for 20 straight years, they were a contender. They fell off for a couple of years at the end of the 70s, and then they made a particularly wise draft pick, and that made them a contender for another 10 or 12 years. And, you know, but anyway, so, th so, we we're talking about the top five players. We're talking about the top five players on a team with so many Hall of Famers yep. and so many great players is very, very challenging, as you said. And, sure. and there are guys who would be top five on any other team in the NBA's history that we don't even crack our top ten. You know what's pretty? <laughs> I was just thinking about it for looking at all of New England sports. What we mm -hmm. had, how many other teams around? would just love to be New England based. Oh, well, we, we did a whole episode a little while back. Oh my um, goodness. Where we talked about- We are spoiled rotten brats in this area. We, we really, really are. are. We talked about the last 14 years and the number of championships that we had in the last 14 years. And then adding on to that, even since 2007, you realize every one of our sports teams it's has incredible. been to the championship round twice. It's incredible. All four it's... of them have been there twice. Now, they did not win it, but all four of them have been there at least twice, and the Patriots have been there three times. Well, um, well, since even the Red, 2007. Even Red Sox have been there countless times, too. You know, well, this is the championship round. Oh, it's for the championship the final for game, rounds. Or, yeah. you know, so whether it's the yeah. World Series or the Super Bowl or the Stanley Cup Finals or the NBA Finals. They're there. Every single one of them have been there twice in the, in the last eight years. Old faithful. Uh, and, and the Patriots three times. Anyway, we need, we're not supposed to talk about that today. We're no, we're not. We're talking about the Boston Celtics. We're talking yes. about the five top Boston Celtics of all time. We need to bleed green. We need to bleed green right here. I believe in green 18 yeah. or whatever. Here we go. So speaking of bleeding green and mm. I believe in green 17. Yes. I am going to mention the only guy on this list that only had one championship. Okie doke. <laughs> everybody else on this list had more than one. Uh, in fact, everybody else on this list had more than three. Yeah. Or had at least three. Um, and the number one or number five Boston Celtics player of all time, in my opinion, and this was tough for me to do is Paul Pierce. Okay. You know, he's still playing, though not for the Celtics anymore. Um, and the reason it's hard is just because I tend to, to glorify the older players. But when you really look at what Paul Pierce accomplished with virtually no supporting cast for a good part of his career, the best part of his career, uh, is really amazing. He, I, he's number three all-time in points. He is. Or is he number two? No, he's number three all-time in points for the Boston Celtics. Yep. Um, I, you know, he's in the tops in terms of shooting percentage and, and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. He did win a, a championship, but he spent the, 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 the best he, of his career. He had nobody else on the team. He right. was there for the dark, dark ages. The dark ages, yeah. When they were trying to rebuild and revamp the team, and then he was there for their, their dominance, which, in my opinion, I still feel they should have won more championships. They, they, they should have won at least one more. 2010s is the one that can come back and, and haunt you a little yeah, bit. Yeah. I mean, they were up eight points yes, they were. to the Lakers at that it game. Was more, I think it was there were Maybe 12 more. Points. I think it was 12 and points. they should have won that. They should have won that, and they did. I agree. They should have had at least one more championship. Could have had two more. They went to the finals three times yep. um, in those those years with Garnett and Ray That Allen. team was very special they, in what they, they, they put were a together. Special team it really and, was. And, uh, and it's too bad they didn't do more. It's too bad. But to me, you know, Paul Pierce uh, you know, has proven himself. He will be in the Hall of Fame. Yep. They will retire his number as soon as he's done. Truth be told, 
Pierce is number five on our list. Yeah, yeah, and you had number you had Paul. Pierce I had him five number five well. on our list too. Yeah, so yeah, so we have too. Paul Pierce as number five on our list. Number four mm. on on I think both of them. I think we actually had matching lists, believe it or not, when we did this. Um, but number now they're going to turn the channel. No, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. There is no drama here. No, there's lots of drama. He had all sorts of weird people on his list. Yeah, uh, and Antoine Walker was on his yep. list. And the Todd Day, Todd Day was on yep. his list. No, number four on uh, my list was Bob, Brian Scalabrini. Brian Scalabrini. <laughs> That's right. Right. Um, no, it's Walter McCarty. Yeah. I love Walter. Uh, <laughs> No, my number four on my list was Bob Cousy. Yep. Bob Cousy, uh, the Coos. Yep. First of all, I didn't know ever see him play. He was mm -hmm. actually uh, the color announcer on the TV broadcast when yes. I was a kid yeah. uh, for the local broadcast of the Celtics games. But Bob Cousy is probably considered, I would say, in the top three or four best point guards in NBA history. Sure. And part of the reason for that is that he's the guy who really is responsible for developing the role of the point guard. Yes. You know, in terms of being the passing guy, not the shooting guy first. Yes. Uh, number one, all time in Celtics and assists, which is not surprising being the point guard. Right. We always remember, you know, the, the old grainy black and white footage of him getting the ball and dribbling around, yep. you know, just around guys to, 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 to run the clock out. You can't do any more because of the shot clock, but in the pre-shot clock days. You could do had, that. He could do that. And he mm -hmm. had ball control skills better than anybody, anyone mm -hmm. had ever seen. Right. Um, and so the Coos comes in at number four for me. I think you had the Coos at number four as well. He's like the, you know, the Thomas the Tank engine. He's, he's the motor. He was yep. the one that would set up Russell. He would, I think, the unsung hero on getting as many championships as there was. In 1956 really? 57 season, he was the MVP. Mm -hmm. And again, he led the league in assists eight straight years. Yep. Yep. That's extremely impressive with me. And a six time champion. Yep, yep. Unbelievable mm -hmm. player. Um, you know, and as I said, you know, when you think about point guards in, the, in league history, yeah. I can only come up with maybe two I would put ahead of him. Okay. And that's only maybe. Yeah. And that would be Magic Johnson and John Stockton. I, and, and I'm, Great names. And, yeah. I'm, and I even hesitate with John Stockton. Yeah. I think probably if you were to stack Kuzi against Magic Johnson, probably Magic Johnson overall was a yes. better player. But when you have someone that's in the top three in their position, uh, you know, in, in league history, mm -hmm. they got to be one of the top Celtics well, of all have, time. You know, that, absolutely. You know, and, and, and that's absolutely They don't true. win those championships without his work, right? That is 100% true. They do not win those championships yep. without And Russell him. doesn't look as good. And Russell doesn't look yeah. as good. We'll talk about Russell. Yes, we will. Okay, number three on my list was John Havlicek. Steals the ball? Steals the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and Havlicek was interesting because Havlicek was a guy who transcended two different eras of Celtics he history. Yep. He played with the Russell Celtics in the 60s, towards the tail end of the 60s, went through the early 70s, where the Celtics dropped off for a couple of years, but then was still there for the two 70s championships. Yeah, he was. Tommy Heinsohn was the coach. Um, and so he transcends both of those periods. He's number two all-time in Celtics in points. Yep. Scored and, and, and just a terrific all-around player. Yeah, he was the Celtics' leading scorer um, for the longest time and 13-time All-Star. Yeah, Unbelievable. long career of dominance. I believe he was an eight-time champion. Yep. Um, and just just an, just an unbelievable player, John Havlicek. I love how again you said he he was there for that you know the dominance towards the end. Yeah. And then he came for the struggle, and then at the tail end got two more championships. Got two more championships, in the 70s. and he was the, he That's was special. He was the uh, veteran calming presence yeah, he on was. those on those on the seventy two and seventy four. And I'm sure he was one of the guys that was able to get the younger guys to buy into the system. Absolutely. And you need those players you around those to players. help for longevity really, and to help. I, battle it out. I think of Havlicek, you know, we, to put him in the modern parlance, we just talked about Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce did that for yeah. for the Celtics. Just gonna, that's a great point right there. You know, great with that point. veteran presence, yep. you know, that really kind of reminded everybody that this is the Boston Celtics, and that's yep. exactly what Havlicek did in the 70s. Sure. So he was a great player in the 60s when he was playing on the, on the yeah, Russell teams in the 60s Yes, as he well. was. So uh, just a terrific all-around basketball player, and, and uh, again, you know, probably one of the top 10 forwards of all time in basketball totally. history, probably, totally. in NBA history. So just a terrific all-around player. My number two uh, is the one, the only, and I really thought about him as the number one of all time. Did you? Okay. I really did. The only okay. thing that stopped me is the championships. Yes. Ironically, on our list, you know, uh, he's actually the second lowest in terms of number of championships that he has. Right. Um, and that is Larry Bird. Right. Uh, a lot of people think of Larry Bird, remember the Larry Bird day fond days fondly. A lot of people consider Larry Bird probably the best shooting forward 
of all time basketball yeah. history. There's a lot of competition there. Yeah. Um, but when you stack his numbers up against other people's, I mean, I just posted a thing on on Facebook not that long ago comparing uh, Larry Bird's age 30 season yeah. with LeBron James's age 30 season. I remember seeing that. LeBron James, yeah. who's talking about himself as being the best basketball player of all time. Yeah. And his stats aren't as good as Larry Bird's were right. at the same age, at that age 30. You know, and Larry Bird in every statistical column yep. was better than LeBron James. Right. Now, statistics don't tell the whole story. Right. But for a player to call himself the best of all time, you got to be better than Larry Bird. I can't he, believe you even dropped a LeBron reference on this show. I can't stand <laughs> I'm sorry. him. I can't, can't sta stand him. I can't stand LeBron either, but it was just a, 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 by example. The big um, ticket, the big show. Yep. That's all it is for him. For me personally, I started watching uh, the Celtics in 1978, the season before Larry Bird joined the Celtics. Okay. They actually drafted him, and he, he didn't come to the league right away. He actually stayed in college for his final year at Indiana right. State. Remember, went to that memorable game against Magic Johnson in the, in the NCAA Finals, and then joined the Celtics uh, for the next season. And, um, and until the, the Paul Pierce Garnett Ray Allen Celtics, the largest single season turnaround for any team in NBA history yeah. was the 78 to 79 it was. Celtics. It was. When Larry Bird was a rookie, or the 79 to yeah. 80 Celtics, when the year Larry Bird was a, was a rookie. 79, now the, yeah. yeah now it was the, 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 the Garnett Pierce Allen Celtics actually overtook that. Yes, they did. Um, as the largest single season turnaround in, yep. in NBA history. But I, I don't know what else you could say about Larry Bird. <laughs> One of a kind. Yeah. Special player. All those things that map out together. The best was just, I didn't get a chance to see this, but I wish I got to see more of it, was that Magic Johnson-Larry Bird rivalry. It was, it was Celtics-Lakers for so many times in that, eight, in that 80s era. It was the and absolute best. And that was special, magical basketball. Over the last... And that is something that has completely been stripped of the NBA now. The, it's not the, the same. Over the last 10 years, the NFL has tried to do the Peyton Manning-Tom Brady matchup the yeah. same way. Doesn't hold a candle, no, in my opinion, no. to, Even watching the, clips to the Magic Johnson, it just doesn't hold Larry Bird no, it uh, uh, matchup. It was, it was the rivalry. It was, it was the rivalry for that time period. The thing that Larry Bird also had, which is not quantified in, in statistics, was his court presence. Mm -hmm. He always knew what was going on, always knew the best thing to do in a yep. given situation, always knew where his teammates were Wasn't for it a quick the, pass. Was it a play of 87 where he came out of nowhere, kind of got the, the ball? That was and the 87, uh, 87 Eastern Conference. It wasn't the that's right. Conference Finals. Was it, was it the Conference Finals? I think it was finals? the Eastern Conference Finals. It was the 87 Eastern Conference Finals. It was against the Bulls? Finals. No, it was against the Detroit Pistons. The Pistons, yes. And uh, the Pistons had the game won. There was two seconds Comes left out of the nowhere. Clock. All they had to do was pass the ball in, and they'd win the game, and they'd win the series. And uh, Larry Bird came out of nowhere, stepped in, stole the pass. Yep. DJ, D Dennis Johnson, yep. doesn't get enough credit. DJ under um, the basket, yeah, he makes he it! dashed under the basket, and this is what I'm talking about court presence. This Bird, st the, the steal didn't win the yeah. game. It was the pass yeah. to Dennis Johnson Flips under the DJ basket for, for, the, yeah, for yep. the layup. Yeah. You know, and that's what won the game. Yep. That was the game winner right there. So, so that was just Would that be, play. you think, one of his single-handed Biggest moments. That of was his probably career. his signature moment. Signature moment. Like we talked about, yeah. Havlicek stole the ball. Yeah. It was Bird stole the yeah. ball. You know, that Bird was his, steals probably the ball. his signature one. I mean, Larry Bird had a ton of them though. He did. Larry Bird, I think, still leads the it's league. It's almost not fair to single out one particular play over his no, career. Larry Bird, I think, still leads the league in last-second winning shots in, in NBA history. Yeah. Just he put up a shot out of nowhere and, yeah. and, and all of that. We got to get to our number one because we're running out of time in this half For break. Yep. of the uh, of the big picture. Uh, our number one uh, Celtics player of all time should be obvious to anyone who has ever touched a basketball. It's Brian at this Scalabrini. Point. It's Brian Scalabrini. No, it's, it's, it's Bill Russell, of course. Of course it is. Bill Russell, um, the winningest basketball player in history. It is. I think he won four NC or three NCAA championships, won 11 just NBA a pure winner. Championships, a winner across the board. You know, his his rival was Wilt Chamberlain. Yep. And and he, you know, Bill Russell was not the biggest center in the world. No, he wasn't. He didn't score the most points, but he dominated Wilt Chamberlain. Yep. Uh, both in, in the regular season and in the finals, a monster rebounder yep. for Bill Russell. Uh, he also was a player coach and a coach. Won a couple championships as a coach. You yep. can't say too much about Bill Russell. Definitely Red Auerbach's guy. Yep. 100% right there. But Russell with 11 championships, does anybody even stand a chance uh, come close second to that? It's I don't never, think so. Never, never going to happen. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Never will happen you know, in professional I mean, sports again. You know, I, 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 uh, Magic, or not Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan had six. Yes. And and that's impressive in and of but, itself, but, but, but no one's ever going to touch it. But like you said, the whole thing with the championships, 
that's just one category of him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people look at champion and say, oh, automatic, number one. It can be debated, yeah. certainly can, but when you have that high of a number, sorry. And not only that, you absolutely can say if Bill Russell isn't on those teams, I doubt the Celtics win one championship. Exactly. You know, exactly. His, his presence the on the 50s, court late 50s was in the early 60s. They, like no they other. They don't win a single one. His presence was number one. All right, we need to take a break here on the big picture. Yep. But we have Paul Pierce, number five, Bob Cousy, number four, John Havlicek, number three, Larry Bird, number two, and your number one Boston Celtic of all time was Bill Russell. So we're going to raise the banner for the Patriots next? <laughs> we're going to raise the banner for okay. the Patriots in the second half. But we need to take a break here. We're going to say hello to some of our friends, and we'll be back in just a moment. You're watching the big picture on RCTV. Hello and welcome back to The Big Picture here on RCTV. My name is Kevin Vent. I continue to be your host on The Big Picture and I continue to have Nick Face here as my guest. Whether you like it or not. Whether we like it or not. We did talk about the top five Boston Celtics of all time in the first half and we're ending up our top fives and our two double episode top fives with your New England Patriots. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a tough one and I'll tell you why. Because the Patriots have been dominant over the last 14 years, and so it's easy to think that all of their best players happened in the last now. 14 years. But the fact of the matter is, is they have a history going back to 1960, and they, they have do. had some fantastic players before this really historic run. So we're going to get right into it right away. Having said that, my number five best player of the Patriots of all time is someone from the last 14 years, okay. but actually transcend goes before that uh, time. My number five is Troy Brown, wide sure. receiver, um, who, was, if you remember, was in the 96 Super Bowl and yes, then was, was in the uh, the uh, three of the four Super Bowl wins of recent times. Yes. Uh, Troy Brown is the t uh, team career leader in receptions. Yeah. He's second in yards, seventh in touchdowns. Um, to me, his signature game was the, uh, the 2001 AFC Championship game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah. which really to me, quantified Troy Brown as a player. Yeah. Uh, he played wide receiver. He was a punt returner. He sometimes returned kicks, but he also, in the latter part of his career, played defense. He was a coach's dream. Mm -hmm. He could be put anywhere. I remember when he was going back for special teams yep. and returning kickoffs. Yep. Well, the, t the 2001 a AFC Championship game, you know, the Patriots were losing that game. Yes, they were. And he returned a punt for yes, a touchdown. Yes, he did. Then he recovered, if you remember, a, uh, a muffed field goal that yes. the, the Steelers tried and passed it off to, I think it was Antoine Smith, who ran it, it in Antoine for a touchdown. Smith. You know, so I mean, special teams play won that game for the Patriots in 2001. Right. This run for the Patriots might not have happened if not for those two plays by Troy, Troy Brown. Troy Brown was nothing but class, nothing but versatility. Yep. Like I said, coach's dream. The Patriots of that era, of the 2000 era and beyond, they're nowhere without Troy Brown. Absolutely. I don't think. And people forget that he played cornerback in the Super Bowl in yeah. 2000 against the Eagles. And he had three interceptions as a cornerback when he was a wide receiver initially. Yeah. And again, kind of won the game for him, even yeah. though he didn't get the MVP. Always a hungry player, always looking to do whatever he was needed, and was going to be successful in whatever role you put him in. Absolutely. So he's and even survived a release at one and point in his, for, in his Patriots That's right. career, if That's you right. remember that. Really hard. The, 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 probably the, the second best receiver on Patriots history is probably Mike Singletary. Mm -hmm. and to, you know, Randy Moss, Wes Welker probably weren't here long enough. Yeah. But, uh, but to weren't. me, Troy Brown, because of the, being the actual leader in receptions and because of his versatility, comes in at number five over yep. Mike Singletary. Yep. Uh, number four, best uh, New England Patriots player of all time is, in my mind, mm -hmm. is Andre Tippett, okay. uh, a linebacker through the uh, 1980s. Number one uh, in Patriots history in sacks. Yep. Uh, number one in quarterback hurries. Number one in Patriots fumble recoveries all time. Yep. Hall of Famer. And that's why I put him, even though he didn't win a Super Bowl, that's why I put him above some of the linebackers that played in uh, the modern era sure. of the Patriots. They've had some terrific linebackers. Brewski is a standout. Yep. Um, you know, Willie McGinnis was a standout as an outside linebacker. Lots of, you know, Teddy Johnson was a standout. That's Lots of guys there. you could point to there. But Andre Tippett's in the Hall of Fame. And I don't think those guys Tippett are making the Hall of Fame. So, yep. so because of that, I had to put him at number four. Yep. Number three is kind of a, a throwback a little bit uh, to the uh, 70s and 80s, Mike Haynes. Okay. It was real tough for me to decide between him and Ty Law as the best uh, Patriots cornerback of all time. The reason I put him as uh, ahead of Ty Law is because he was the Darrell Revis of his day. Okay. He was the guy who was the cover corner that nobody threw to his side. Yeah. Uh, he made the Pro Bowl in 1980 as a cornerback, only with one interception. Why? Because they never threw to his half of the field, just yeah. like Darrell Revis. So that's why I put him at number three. Okay. Number two, I have the Hog, John Hanna. Yeah. Um, 13 seasons with the Patriots, nine Pro Bowls, 
over his career, and it's tough because offensive linemen don't have stats. They don't. You you got to look with your eye. But even to this day, most NFL analysts across the country yep. consider Hog Hanna, John Hanna, to be the best offensive lineman in NFL history. Mm -hmm. If you are considered the best of something in NFL history, you got to be on the best in your, your team. Yeah, you <laughs> so do. he's number two. Number one is the only player who's active I put in the entire four teams, yep. and it should be obvious to anyone who's watching now, I did put Tom Brady as my number one Patriot of all time. You can't not. You can't you not. You just can't. He's in the conversation for best quarterback in yes. NFL history. Uh, probably in the top four or five quarterbacks in NFL history, regardless of what you think about all those things. Yep. The four Super Bowl wins, all the touchdowns, all the yardage, yep. um, you know, all the Super Bowl appearances, all the AFC Championship game appearances, eight yep. AFC Championship games in his in his in his 13 years as a starter. Um, you know, six Super Bowls, four Super Bowl wins. The day when Tom Brady does not your quarterback for the Patriots is going to be a sad day. Yeah, we're going to have a conversation about that at some time in the future. Yeah. But I want to get give you an opportunity to talk about your sure. top five because you have some differences from me. I do. The one that is um, that we do agree on is definitely the Brady and the Brown. Troy Brown was number five on my okay. list. Just, again, versatility, Mr. Patriot. Yeah. If you needed something, he's going to get it done. Okay. Number four. I'm going with Adam Vinatieri. Okay. Now I'm going choice. with that. With the kicker. I'm going with the kicker. Adam Vinatieri in that 2001-2002 Super Bowl run, it was breathtaking to mm -hmm. see things that were happening, you know, before our eyes and everything. Did that just happen? I don't think anyone will ever forget the Snow Bowl kick. I will never forget that. There were actually two kicks in that game, but the first one that tied the game. That the snow was not light snow. No. That was wet heavy crap snow. And if you think, look at the pictures of that game, you forget how bad the lighting was in Foxborough Stadium. Oh Old my. Foxborough Stadium. And they had the grass. Was there was no turf. So there there's no another turf. thing there. There was grass. And, and that, that first kick, you know, he made two kicks he in that snowball kicks. game. Yep. The one that won it and the one that tied it yep. to go into overtime. The, the tying kick, yep. the one at the end of regulation, to me, one of the greatest kicks in NFL history. Absolutely. It was unbelievable. It was just cleared the bar. Just If you look at the picture, just over the outstretched hand of the yeah. defensive player for the, the Raiders. Um, you know, truly. That play right there with the kicks and everything, I have to, that is one of the top moments in ever in, yeah, Boston, in sports Boston sports history. history. I agree. I have to say that that actually was more of a goosebump type of feeling than when the Red Sox win in the World Series Ooh. 2004. It's tough, but it's felt like that was more of a simple play. That's the true. Back, that's, that's why. True. That's it was true. a chopper from Edgar Renteria to Folk. Yeah. It wasn't going to be a Bill Buckner through the legs and thing. And they, they had a this solid one lead was, in that oh, game. Yeah. Is this going to happen? Gonna Your happen? heart's beating and everything. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, that just happened. His kicks won two of their three Super Bowls yep. You know, on the last second, and it's hard, it's hard to go against And then that. you go against the Rams one. Yep. The Rams kick with all the lights flashing yep. and three seconds or so left on the clock. Boom, he makes it. It's unbelievable. So we need to so that's your number 4. That's so number, 4. number 4. Number 3 is Andre Tippett. Okay, Andre who I Tippett. About? Um, again, with Tippett, 100 sacks, five-time pro bowler and a 1985 defensive player of the year. Co 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 defensive player of the year. Still pretty impressive yeah. resume there. Yeah. Um, he's in the Pats Hall of Fame too. Yeah, as well as the the, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Exactly. And the thing with Andre Tippett is he was he along with Hog Hanna were the first two guys who played their entire careers with the Patriots yeah. who were in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Every other Patriots player that was in the Hall of Fame up to that point mm -hmm. um, had played significant time with other teams. Sure. Um, but they were they were the first two Patriots mm -hmm. in the Hall of Fame. John Hanna takes number two for me. John Hanna again for him. 1981, best offensive lineman to play the position in Sports Illustrated. That's yes, what that's that's, right. what, that's what their um, the, the biggest famous cover, the yeah. famous cover from there. 1991, uh, Hall of Famer and a nine-time Pro Bowler, like yeah. you had said. And then Brady, obviously number one at the top, and there is uh, no debate about any kind of deflatedness about him anymore. <laughs> There is no longer a debate about deflating. No, there's not. There are lots of Patriots we didn't choose. You cannot deflate him from our the list. Way. No, no, I, you know, I, I mentioned, um, um, you know, a couple already, but do you have any other kind of... Uh, Ones that stand out, definitely Ty Law. Ty that Law, was a tough absolutely. one to eliminate on tough that list. Tough one to eliminate. Three-time uh, Super Bowl yep. champion. I personally think if he did not leave the team, he left because of money, m yep. money issues yep. there at the trade. Very well could have won maybe more. Patriots possibly, could have with his, with his play. His, his, it was very impressive to see what he was able to do. If you remember, you know, they, they, the, 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 uh, the next season after they won the three Super Bowls in four years, that next season they went, they went to the AFC Championship game again against the, uh, the Colts. And if you remember, they put up a big lead in that game. Yep. And then the Colts came back in the second half. Mm -hmm. It's hard to believe that if Ty Law 
was on that team that they that Peyton Manning would have been able to launch that passing attack. You're absolutely way, right. I was thinking did. about that. And so it's it's there's a high likelihood, in my opinion, that they would have gone to that Super the Super Bowl again. Yes. Um, in 2006, there. So I mean, what ifs is that's, what that's ifs part of you know, it's you part of know. sports. You just but never it's hard know. to believe a team with Ty Law would have allowed that many passing yards in the second half. To that's Peyton true. Manning. No, I don't think it would have happened. Especially with Ty Law's history of Peyton Manning and his history of picking Peyton Manning. He off. knew what was coming his way. Yes, he did. With Manning, yep. he did. And that was just Manning was with other players too. Yeah, yeah. So Ty Law, anyone Bruschi's else? Bruschi's on my Bruschi. list. Self-explanatory right there. One of the best linebackers that was in Patriots history. The great thing with Brewski is he was such an instinctive player. He was yeah. not one of those guys that was was a physical marvel in terms of his athleticism. Yeah. But but just, as you said, a classic Patriot. Knew, yes. Knew his job, did yeah. it unbelievably well. All those interceptions for touchdowns, you know, picking him off as a linebacker, mm-hmm. unbelievable player, Teddy, Teddy Brewski. Now, here's the thing. We know Brady is still the active player on our list from everything right. here. But when all is said and done, can we debate about current players that are on the roster now as top players, to me, too? To me, the only one that could crack this list yes. that is a current player is, is Rob Gronkowski. Okay. It's way too early in his career to make that judgment it call. It is. I, he's, in my mind, he's not even necessarily yet the best tight end in, in Patriots history. Okay. I think probably still... Um, uh, you need ben a Coates. bigger sample size. Ben, ben Coates is probably still the best tight end in okay. Patriots history. But as but but Gronk is right there with him at this point. Yes, he is. He has the Super Bowl win that Ben Coates doesn't have. Yes. Um, and I have it though. Ben Coates did play in the Super Bowl in '96. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have a feeling if Gronk can stay healthy mm-hmm. and and lives out his career with the Patriots, yep. with Tom Brady for a couple of years, that he's going to be on this list. And if you're going to talk about kickers, one of the best uh, kickers of all time for the Patriots goes all the way back to the 60s, Gino Capaletti. Gino Capaletti, uh, for a long radio voice too. Yeah, yeah, for the longest time, Gino Capaletti was the highest scoring player in NFL, in NFL yeah, history. He was. Um, and definitely one of the highest scoring Patriots. I do think uh, Gustavski has since passed him in that. Yes, yeah. Um, but, but, you know, if we're going to talk about kickers, we, gotta, we can't You have to. You, yeah, that's Gino's right. Gino Capaletti. He was, yep. he was a terrific player. Yeah. Um, so any other Patriots that we, we No, that's have about it that I, I have on my Singletary list. I mentioned Singletary before. Yep. Uh, Morgan, uh, Morgan Too Stan. many other players didn't win a, uh, yeah, didn't um, win. a, a Super Bowl, and they yeah. just weren't there yeah. for a long enough yeah. time. And Morgan Stanley is another one. Irving Fryer is another one. It was an excellent Patriots player. Yeah. Uh, and you can go down the list. You know, we already mentioned Wes Welker. Randy Moss is only here a couple of years, but he was sure. a terrific wide receiver when we had him. Yeah. You know, so there are lots of players that we could point out, but these were our top five with a few extras. That's that right. Added in. What do you think? This, That's right. We've talked about the top five Boston Celtics of, of all time. We've talked about the top five New England Patriots of all time. Mm-hmm. Do you agree? Do you dis- disagree? Why don't you discuss that amongst yourselves? You can. You can do that. We are out of time here on The Big Picture. I'd like to thank Nick Face for thank being here. Thank you very much, Kevin. This was fun. This. We've had a lot of fun. We hope you've had fun because I truly believe sports are supposed to be fun. And we want to keep it they fun need to and be. make it fun. If That's they're the not, they point. need to be. If they're not, they need to be. My name is Kevin Vent. Thank you for watching. You've been watching The Big Picture on RCTV. Have a great day.